This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo Legion 7, specifically the 7i, which stands for Intel. But don't stop watching just because of that. I know the Ryzen model has been very popular, and yes, you can get this with AMD Ryzen inside too. Same chassis, everything else is going to be the same on it, and NVIDIA RTX 3000 series graphics. But, you know, Intel has a couple of things going for it, including Thunderbolt 4, PCIe 4, speeds for SSDs and all that sort of thing. So I reviewed the Legion 5 Pro a while ago, and it took us a while for Lenovo to get this Legion 7 test. And I know some of you are probably still finding it a little confusing as to what's going on, what the difference is. I mean, there's a Legion 5, there's a Legion 7, there's a Legion 5 Pro, there's the slim model and all that sort of thing. So hopefully this will help you. But I'll tell you one thing, 16-inch QHD+, Plus display on board 16 by 10 aspect ratio very nice display good performance vapor chamber cooling so and the price is nice too especially compared to some of the premium laptops like the Asus Rogue Strix Scar or the Alienware X15 and 17 and that nice tweener 16 inch size so it's worth a look now and that's what we're going to do so first let's address the elephant in the room CES 2022 is happening right now. No doubt we will see refresh with Intel 12th gen CPUs. We have the 11th gen here and upcoming with Ryzen latest generation as well. So uh, that said, it'll probably be several months more before those hit the market. So this probably is going to be what you see. It's hard to say. Who knows? Anyway, and also you might find the 11th gen Intel at a discount and it's still a strong performer. As with the Legion 5 Pro, the big selling points here are the price is really fair for what you get. You've got a metal lid on this, very nice build quality. The aesthetics aren't bad. And you've got RTX 3060, 3070, and 3080 graphics, and with pretty good wattages, too. The 3080 goes up to 165 watts. We have the 3070, which does 140 watts. So this is not some gimped out Max Q kind of laptop. Also, you're wondering, what's the difference between this and the Legion 5 Pro, which is also QHD plus 16-inch laptop, right? So the difference here is you get a lot more RGB bling. You've got lighting effects all the way around the edges of this laptop. And it, I gotta admit, it is kind of pretty. And even the fan vents have RGB lighting and the per key for the keyboard using Corsair's IQ software on this one. So more bling, per key RGB, that's one of the things that you get with this. There's also a difference in the keyboard. Now, some people like the Legion 7 keyboard better. I personally like the 5 Pro. It feels more tactile and springy, whereas the Legion 7 just feels short travel to me and not very tactile. But again, that's a personal preference kind of thing. And for you hardcore gamers, you're probably going to set this up with some nice mechanical keyboard on your desktop anyway. Of course, you do have the number pad on board with this. It's 16 inch, so it's not too cramped, you know, like a 15 inch would be, but. Hmm. Another difference is this one, the display opens all the way flat to 180 degrees versus the 5 Pro, which opens at a reasonably large angle, but not flat. I don't know if that matters much to you, but that's sort of a signature Lenovo thing that started with the ThinkPads, and it's there, I guess, if you're giving presentations, I don't know, or playing in a very unusual angle, maybe in bed, propped up on your knees. The 16-inch display is 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so 2560 by 1600. It is IPS, and it's quite bright, unusually bright for a gaming laptop at 500 nits, supports HDR 400, and it's the same display you'll see on the Legion 5 Pro, which is to say it's very good. It's really just the right resolution for something with this amount of horsepower because it can handle 2K gaming nicely. So why slum it full HD resolution? The color gamut on this is full sRGB. It's not bad, but it's not full P3 or Adobe RGB for content creators, but I think for content consumers, it's more than good enough. You can get this with Intel Core i7 or Core i9 CPUs. We have the Core i7 on board, and they have fancy names for their cooling system and all that sort of thing, but this one is vapor chamber, so it does let it clock pretty high. And if and if you compare this to the Legion 5 Pro, both running the same AMD Ryzen in that case, you will see a bit higher clock speeds on this because of the superior cooling. Uh, the noise volumes are about the same between the two of them, and the surface temperatures are pretty close. I would say that this one doesn't get that hot to the touch for a gaming laptop. When it comes to gaming full bore, it can hit 51 decibels, so you certainly will hear it when you're gaming. It's a gaming laptop. That's still the case. Core temperatures on this, not too bad, pretty well managed, and of course, I'm 
all the laptops now are using AI software to balance CPU and GPU wattage and temperatures and all that sort of thing to try to get the best performance out of it. It's pretty effective and the CPU temperatures on this are by no means alarming, which is nice to see. We're not talking like it's pegged at 100 degrees centigrade when you're playing something like Cyberpunk 2077, which is one of the games that we tested on it. This does also add Toby eye tracking software, which I'm not a big fan of. The idea is where you're looking on the screen and it tries to, you know, do stuff for you. I, I'm not a fan and you can disable it if you want to, but if you do like that, that's something that you get with the Legion 7 model. In terms of build quality, it is very solid. Obviously, it's an angular looking laptop, but you do have that metal chassis and the keyboard flex is a little bit less than the 5 Pro. In fact, it's quite stiff, so it feels pretty tangy, but it's not that heavy either. Thankfully, today's gaming lap laptops, for the most part, are neither super thick nor super heavy. And in fact, it's not any bigger than the 5 Pro in some dimensions. It's a little bit smaller, so it's not that bad a carry. What is a... a a bad carry is the power adapter, which Lenovo's been doing with all the Legion laptops. You just get a 300 watt adapter. So the, the good part is, you know, a lot of laptops, they reduce the weight of the charger by kind of giving one that's not quite enough watts to keep it fully charged when it's going full bore gaming or video exporting or whatever it is you're doing with it, blender renders, all the things that this kind of laptop is great for. So that's not a problem. This has more watts than you actually need, but the, the thing is it's big and it's heavy. I call it the baby killer. I mean, it's, uh, it adds a lot to the carry. In terms of ports, this has a lot of ports. You got three USB-A, 3.2 Gen 1, you have several USB-C ports. I mean, a lot of USB-C ports for a gaming laptop and Thunderbolt 4 ports. So for those of you who are looking for Thunderbolt and thus looking at Intel, you've got that here for docs and eGPUs someday, that sort of thing. You've got HDMI 2.1 on board as well, RJ45, Ethernet, and the whole nine yards. Wi-Fi 6 for your wireless card, by the way, with Bluetooth 5.1, and that's a AX201 card. And another nice thing that gaming enthusiasts like is we have a software-based MUX switch, so you can use the Lenovo Vantage software to switch between switchable graphics, and Video Optimus basically, and just in being in DGPU mode to get the max possible frame rates, which is the mode that we ran our tests in. Our gaming footage is using that, and our 3D benchmarks are using that, so that's nice to have as well. And their software, speaking of that, actually isn't too bad. I mean, compared to Alienware's software, which is so in need of some love and help from Dell. Uh, this is actually pretty straightforward, useful stuff. You can set a bunch of parameters, you know, it's well done, modern looking. I like it. For the RGB programmability, you're gonna use that Corsair IQ service, which used to have a problem where it was draining the battery more than it should have, but that seems to have been fixed because I didn't notice that problem. Webcam is a 720p webcam, nothing to write home about. You do have a privacy shutter switch on the side. Sound on this is better than average for a gaming laptop. I mean, it sounds quite nice and full, a little bit better even than the Legion 5 Pro. So for those of you who are playing a game without headphones or you're just using it to watch movies or to improve some video footage, that sort of thing, it's pretty good stuff. Now, a battery on this is an 80 watt hour battery and then this is an Intel gaming laptop with powerful graphics. So you get the whole idea right there. So in switchable graphics mode, you're doing light tasks, you know, web surfing, a little social media, Slack, Office, a little bit of Photoshop, that sort of thing. It goes about four and a half hours on the charge to five hours, which isn't too terrible, but it's obviously not gonna be anything like an Ultrabook or some of the Ryzen systems that are much better at sipping power than Intel systems. The internals and upgradability on this are just what you would expect for a gaming laptop. That's a good thing, but let's see. Bottom cover right here, plenty of ventilation. Your speaker grills are over here. Unscrew the tiny Phillips head screws. The ones at the front are shorter. Remember that when you put it back together and take off the metal cover. And here are the internals. You don't see a lot because there are heat shields and vanity covers over stuff. I've already unscrewed the three screws for both of these plates, which are pretty much symmetrical, even though technically they don't have to be. So you take off one, here is our boot SSD. This is a one terabyte. You can get it anywhere from a 512 to a one terabyte to a two terabyte. And that's the Intel AX201 Wi-Fi 6 card there. So upgradable, nothing soldered, yay. And on the other side, there is space for a second M.2 SSD full height slot. So you can get, get it with actually a second SSD direct from Lenovo or add it yourself after the fact. So that's nice. 
And then the ram is under here, under this cover. And that's just a pop-off cover, no need for screws. And we have two RAM slots. It's DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM. So you can get it with 16 or 32 gigs from Lenovo. And you could upgrade it yourself to 64 gigs using two 32 gig modules on this. And then we have the giant vapor chamber. And they've even connected the fans to it nicely here. So there's no room for air leakage anywhere. You've even got the Legion logo on the fan. Now, one thing I'll say about when you take it apart, and some of the niceties here are the fact that unlike some Asus Rogue Strix machines that we've seen, the light bar stays on the bottom half of the chassis. So it's not attached to the bottom cover. There are no wires to worry about accidentally ripping off when you take the bottom cover off. And another nicety is since most of the ports are along the back, the upper labels have backlighting on them. So in the dark or anything like that, you can still see the labels very clearly for your USB-A ports, your Thunderbolt port, your RJ45, and your HDMI 2.1, and the rectangular charging port. And lastly, obviously speakers flank the battery as per usual. Pretty big drivers, no wonder they sound good. And there's your 80 watt hour battery. And if you did want to repaste this while well, you would just unscrew the heat sink, you got numbered screws for when you tighten it back up for good pressure, and you could repaste this if you wish to do so. So that's the Lenovo Legion 7 with Intel Inside. And yes, no doubt we'll see a refresh soon since CES is happening right now, 2022, with Intel 12th gen CPUs and then the next gen Ryzen 2, the Ryzen 6000. But still, you get an idea of what the chassis is like. Probably it's just going to be CPU refresh for those things and whether this is the machine that fits for you. And if you find it, meanwhile, in a discount with the 11th gen or Ryzen 5000, you might want to jump on it because it ticks a lot of boxes. The price is a pretty fair for what you get to say the least boy is there a lot of rgb bling on this for those of you who like that with perky but that qhd plus display on this uh, nice 165 hertz and the good cooling system on it are pluses i might not love the keyboard but some of you well might i'm lisa from mobile tech review be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them